<laughs> hey, welcome back to another episode of the Final Stop Podcast, dude. I'm your host, Daniel Bridgegad. Tequila Stepdad, live from the Mezcal Manor, sitting to my right, as always, the Vampire King, King Possum, Lord Meerkat, in my finest sweatshirt, Tristan Bowling. <laughs> You have Dr. Harry forearms. I just realized that. I do have very... Do you write in chicken scratch? I'm very... Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Not you important. see my notebook? It looks like a manifesto. Yeah, Jesus Christ. It looks like a suicide note. Over here on the side table... If you count every third word, it is. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like that one email Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> made where it said, go fuck yourself. If you point it towards towards a true north upside down, you get a whole different message from it. Hold it up to the sun. I'm crying. <laughs> Over here on the side table, the two dudes with black hair... I don't want to introduce you as a brown guy every time. It's Andrew Ayana and Aldo Campagna. What up? What's up and man? over here in the jump seat, dude, dude, back in the studio, Brody Asbo. What's up, buddy? What's going on? Dude, wrapping the merch. You can't see him. He's off screen, but he has the Final Stop t-shirts. Get your merch. And if you wanted to support the podcast even more, go ahead, www.patreon.com slash the final stop. Join the podcast. It's $1. We have a $1 level where you get a bonus Final Stop episode every week get a little flagrant you it's get, pretty we, fun we get a little flagrant but if you want to see something crazy if you want to see the curtain pulled back behind the podcast you want to see how it works you want to see everybody's emotions get a little heightened internal affairs yeah it, that's that's where uh it gets a little that gets fun we name names we have fun uh i made daniel cry it um, was it for emotional effects. Suck and, my nah. and uh, shout, the- shouts out to all the people who have joined. We don't we don't got many. We got let's be honest. We don't got many. We got six. Now these are the realest motherfuckers in the world. Two I would them, die for these. Two men. of them are in this room on microphone. <laughs> so realistically, it was six. Now it's four. Uh, that we're being honest. So Spencer, Ryan, Keel, and Diddy. Thank Shout you. out Diddy. Thank Shout you for Diddy. joining the Patreon, baby. It's only up from here or moderately plateauing for a while until we get a bigger guest that bumps us. Up. I mean, like, dude, these these uh, patrons have been longer with us than the Lost Dutchman. So shout out to them. Yeah, shout yeah, out to yeah, them. The Lost Definitely not a shout out to the fucking LD. Those. Those guys. I heard they sell fentanyl. <laughs> I heard it's laced with PCP, and you don't want anything to do with it. Do you know who cuts the weed? Children. Child, Child slaves. slaves. <laughs> we said the same thing. Look at us. Jinx, you owe me a soda. Jinx, you owe me minimum wage. <laughs> I, get, I don't get paid from this. The fuck? I, I meant the min- child slaves, bro. Oh, uh, you think they get minimum wage? That's what I meant because we jinxed them. Oh, uh, okay. Right, right, right back to not being on the same page. Here we go, <laughs> baby. Right. Is, uh, one, two, three, child slaves. All right. I know. Uh, yeah, are you getting distracted by Tooch? No, but I told you she would go sit right up there. I know. She's good. Know. She's good. Uh, we have uh, Tucci running free for this podcast episode. She's looking out the window. She's our guard cat. Make sure that... Uh, she's domestically autistic, and it's pretty fun to watch. Occasionally, she'll just stare at pigeons, and not in like, I want to kill you, way, just in like a interesting... And she, just want, did she do like the little, little crackles, like little meow crackles? No, I've never seen that, but I would I'd definitely exit her. Black people don't play that shit, but I've seen videos of it. If I ever came out and teach her like... No, it's not even. It, first off, it's not a vampire. It's not like she's just gonna turn you and be like, "Tucci, do you like it?" And she's like, <laughs> "No." It's like it's more like it's like we like uh, Cody does it and it's very cute. I think no, Cody's just trying to breathe. To be no, honest, no, <laughs> like, no. that's a post puberty thing because Tucci's only one. Yeah, yeah. Tucci cannot kill a pigeon right now. Uh, I beg to differ. We had a cricket in our house once. That, that poor, that's a cricket. Oh, that remember? poor nigga you walked remember? into our crib, bro. <laughs> you locked you locked Tucci hey. in the bathroom with the cricket, like kill it, kill oh, it. All I gotta tell you, that, that cricket didn't leave the house. It didn't make Did it Tucci out the crib. Eat the cricket? No, which is even scarier. Just she she it. playfully she fucked toyed it with up. it, yeah. <laughs> which makes me very confident about moving to New York because we have a play little mouse somewhere too, and occasionally she'll just get real pissed off at you that thing. Her shadow boxing. Oh, she's <laughs> dude. I completely would take my cat in a fight, odds wise. I don't care what Vegas says over the biggest rat in fuck it, that New York has offered. This oh. bitch is a ninja. She will murder it. Do you know how they? I think we talked about this on the cast before, but like the like groups of terriers that they have yes, and stuff like that. Fuck those It'd be things hysterical up. if you just have Tucci sitting on your shoulder like an owl, and you're just like, "Oh, you guys have your dogs, Tucci." Kill. Because my cat and then just like goes into a bush and just comes out wearing a bandana of rats. Well, you know cats better than me. My cat's just a what do you call that specific? It's black and white with spots. They're common as fuck. It's not anything crazy. Um, it's not I, a tabby. That's like brown. And like a calico. Calico maybe, maybe. is the correct. I don't know. I don't really black know. Black and white cat name. Yeah. Do you think Tooch is like Perry the platypus, and that when you leave, he puts a little fedora on? Well, it's a she, which is weird because oh, she bad. has Stanley Tucci's name, but. 
She's she, honestly, there's rats in New York that are probably a little bit smaller than her by not that much. Dude, there are rats that would straight up be like sitting there, just being like, "Oh, this is cute." That well, you think you think you and your domesticated ass no. life, you and your fancy feast <laughs> ass life, you, you, you and your <laughs> shipped in food ass life, they're cats who eat fucking dog shit on these streets, <laughs> and I eat them for breakfast, motherfucker. Welcome to the Big Apple. <laughs> and then you fucking kneecaps your cat. Are you kidding me? You're bringing fucking prep school. You know you're bringing prep school logic to the dirty streets of New York. Uniform, uniform thinking, just collared shirt thinking to the big city. Dude, she'd be like, she would chase. Uh, I imagine she chasing a rat down an alleyway, and then you just her stopping and just like a single ember of a cigarette, and a rat comes. He's like. I was hoping you'd follow me. <laughs> like, I didn't want to do this where people can hear, you know. I got Warren. Same, just like flicks it at her. Now that you say that, she probably would get just dismembered. Yeah, just dude. a street rat would fuck her. Street cats. In all dude, honesty. she's a yacht. I don't understand. Dude, she's an ASU chick in Zootopia. Do you- in Zootopia, <laughs> she's a fucking ASU. Like, I'm here for biology. And it's like, where's your heart? She's like, I don't know. I feel it when I do too much blow. Da- yeah, like, daddy's paying for everything, including the blow. Yeah, for real. Um, uh, do you, are you pro outside cat? Because I don't understand that. I have an outside cat. Outside Do your cat, parents not they're care? Ter- they're well, terrible for well, the environment. Well, it was just a stray cat that we started feeding, but like we didn't want to take in this cat because two of us are allergic to cats, so we just feed him and he lives outside. I'm allergic to I cats. Guess, I just different. fucking muscled up. Dude. I'm, t- I'm talking about if you go get a cat and you adopt. Some people go to the shelter. They adopt a cat. Like, this is my cat. I love this cat with my life. And then they have a doggy door where that cat just goes in and out whenever it feels like. Dude, you have a... Cats are already, like, the bigger versions of them are scary, and they're scary because they're wild and they're trained assassins. If you take the wild out, even though Tucci's kind of scary, athletic, and can do wild shit, she lives inside, and she's not scary. When you let this nigga go out and have to run from coyotes and other street cats and capybaras and, and what what are we what, in, what have you in who's, South who's America? Where the fuck you don't know what's out there. A capybara? <laughs> what, 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 are going to run into maybe uh, a dingo? Zaboomafoo. You don't know what the fuck's outside. Yeah. Those things are like fucking, that. you know, they're stepping over needles and trying to avoid homeless people shit like we just saw the CVS outside. Oh, yeah, dude. Fucking. That was wild. Dude, most of dude, the cats in New York city the street cats in new york city would straight up muscle up to that cvs shit and just be like that's dinner well do you remember my old spot there was an outside cat at the when i lived yeah yeah, yeah, i called uh, called the caramel bro tucci and that cat used to stare all day long their conversations must have been like you broke outside bitch you outside (laughs) dirty bitch ass disgusting and this and thing he's like you've never felt the thrill of a kill <laughs> <laughs> dude that has the thing will kill birds there would just be birds sometimes on my porch and they'd just be outside just slaughtered fun like he said an offering kind of that's that's weird i don't i've never had a cat and she doesn't get a chance to do that weird shit like we're weird about letting her out here i don't like my country family in new mexico has like barn cats that like they just live off of like rats and a little bit of food that you leave out for them and like they yeah just, they would just like come back you'll like put out food one day and you'll see it for like you won't see it for two weeks and it'll come back like missing an eye well kind no, that, of yeah, yeah that happened to my cat the way you have yeah. cats or i guess the way you do it in the city but the way my pam- family does it in the country is like you'll have a cat and there's like a food bowl like the size of this cup that you'll fill with food once and then forget about it for about a week and then you'll come back and be like oh i gotta give the cats food and then you dump food back in what the fuck is that thing eating for like six days? No, nah. you know what it is? The, the cats, those cats use that food as bait for rodents. Yeah, the fuck. But that's what I'm saying. So they'll wait for like yeah. a, a rodent to come and try to get the food that yeah. you gave them, and then they'll eat that food. They'll fu- that's what I'm saying. So these things are like, tra- like trained assassins, and then occasionally, like there'll be a young kid that's like just picks it up and brings it inside the house, and I'm like. That's that's not a domesticated animal. That's a very that's a bobcat. For all I'm concerned, like, no, dude. Like thing. at the the house that I had with rats in it, we had two outside Rottweilers, and like every morning, that's a fucking Navy Seal. What the fuck is an outside <laughs> Rottweiler? No, what I'm saying is that <laughs> yeah, it's when Hispanic people cram big dogs into a tiny backyard <laughs> where they can never fully live their lives. Is that the animal version of a felon? 
Like they're out there with a pool of water. <laughs> it's a fucking a, kids' pool full of he's dirty like, water. Doing pull ups in the front yard, bro. <laughs> no, he, like we would wake up and I would go out to in the morning to go to school. Just three fully grown possums just dropped at the doorstep. Well, just re- like wait, and he's sitting there just like. Pretty good, didn't Dude, he? he's trying to exchange them in for like Black and Miles. That's a grown man. <laughs> that's, that's that's a grown man. Those are the Rottweilers that eat babies yeah. that get out and kill kids. These niggas got on whole velvet life. canine do rags. The fuck are you? Just doing? <laughs> yeah, that isn't. That's worse than a cat because dogs. I feel like it's, it's even worse for them to be outside. Not a pet. You have a beast. That's a beast in your home. Yeah. That's what's no the uh, what's the scariest dog you could possibly have? A Chihuahua, bro. Those re- things are assholes. It, dude, it, for it, Chihuahuas are known to fuck up children. A lot of people yeah. think they're all like fun and games, but Chihuahuas will straight up like they'll gnaw take off a finger your, off. Yeah, they'll oh, yeah. gnaw off your baby's hand. Dude, you you ever been? It's surprisingly strong every time. Yeah, a Chihuahua. Yeah, those things suck ass. They're fucking potatoes with legs. Dude, dude they rocks. suck dick. Uh, no, but um, that being said, I had a Chihuahua named Puppy, dude. Shout out, me he too. was blind and deaf, bro. He's he Helen Keller his way in the corner. I had a Helen Keller Chihuahua too, bro. I, my mom was young and like just didn't know how why, to get rid of a dog dude, that needed to get rid of. I had a blind and deaf German Shepherd. Now that's that's, sad, that's, terrifying. that's basically a person that's running. <laughs> like a a I was about to say you're walking around with like a handicapped couch, <laughs> like is going around your house. That like is just running off straight like Native American foot senses. And that was, like, that, no, no, no. The thing is that, that that was also an outside dog. So that thing oh, lived, dude. It, yeah, it all it felt was out. heat. It was, that was the only stimulation. It, it was, that is it a, was the daredevil of dogs. That dude. is a, no. That dog is just a coyote at that point. <laughs> that, it, that, That's what I'm saying. It was terrifying. That's kind of fucked up. You can't send a disabled dog outside. Well, well he yeah. did it, and it's over now. Yeah, you sent it out to its death. Well, it, it had been an outside dog its entire life and then went blind and Well, how do you think most dogs are doing in El Salvador right now? <laughs> Dude, I heard on a stick pretty all right. <laughs> in El Salvador? <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. I like that. <laughs> what, a, what a wolf. Waka. All right, let's keep Walk. going. They're not eating dogs, They're not eating dogs in El Salvador. Subscribe to the internal thing, the Patreon. It's ten dollars. I've been instructed to stop going. I love dogs, by the way. I've been instructed to stop going so hard on these public episodes. Don't Shout say it. Luda. Don't say it like it's like these guys are trying to hold me down. I will these not be These niggas can't hold me. Back. <laughs> don't you even want it? What's the point of having a Patreon? <laughs> if you're you know, like, I'm gonna blow it on the public episode. Save it. Not blow it. If that's what I'm putting out on the public, bro. You we have check even. out the internal. I gotta see this. Hold on. Yeah, you don't get sneezes on the well, internal and, affairs. On the sneeze. And, and, and you're done. <laughs> Zinger. Nice. Hysterical. Tr- Tristan, you were a pig for Halloween. <sighs> oh, yeah. This thing is gay. Can we get to that? Hold yeah, on. Yeah, I want to so, talk about no, this. No, so, no, no, I saw- no, let's talk about this. So, I like, so we're going, essentially, I'll explain my night last night. When did uh, you get the suit? Um, I had it. I wore. I it know for, you did. I, I saw you post the picture with the pig ears, and I was like, that's the only thing you bought as a costume. Well, the thing is. The you thing- just own a salmon suit. No, I will, I got it for Kill Tony and got massive compliments. Um, for what? My uh, the Levi's. He got like, massive compliments for being funny. The salmon suit was just there. No, <laughs> no people. No people were complimenting the flex. They said people said that's a dope fit, and I said, oh, thank you. No, but I had like I had the I already have it. It's basically like. Den- you could probably if you want. I've seen. Yeah, I'll pull it up on your Instagram. Yeah, I was about to say just pull it, put it right here. But like, so I had pig ears on, and I was just basically like a fucking just streetwear pig or whatever. And because what hey, the fuck is a streetwear pig or whatever? I, I was just like wearing regular clothes, but that's I the was, equivalent of a basic bitch cat outfit. You just threw on ears. It was like this is a costume. Yeah, I'm don't, not gonna don't shit on basic bitch cat outfits. All right, when done correctly, that is a very fine statement. Yeah, no, but I'm fucking... So, it was easy. It was just, like, Haley was going out with her friends, and I wanted to hang out with her and stuff like that. And so, like, I didn't want to go fully dressed up. She just got, like, pants from Amazon that, like, were zebra print and, like, a zebra print hand- headband. Okay. And then, so, it, we were all doing just, like, casual outfits like that. It wasn't anything too nice. And where were you... Uh, where were you at? So, we went... Uh, it was... Me, Haley, uh, her friend, her gay friend Brett, who fucking rules. Who's, uh, whose idea was this? To, and, uh, to go out and to this more, location. It, it was their idea. They wanted to go there. It was. Uh, it's a place called Charlie's. Which oh, I like, know Charlie's. Yeah. Dude, I got interrupted at an entire JP set for some gay dudes talking about Charlie. So basically, what you're telling me is. You, so you're already mad. You got slutted out by your girl, and you went to some gay bar with one of her gay friends. How was that experience? No. So it was actually the thing is what I just realized is I don't like going out like that like I get uh, if you uh, have seen in the previous episodes with me getting my uh, 
el- uh, shoulders touched, then imagine me on a dance floor. I hate it. Uh, um, Sam and Sue. Yeah, that's a the beacon for niggas to try and touch your bike spokes. No, no. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't even that. It was just like the fact that it was just like I was surrounded by a lot of people. I'm not drinking, so I'm just like sober like i did a little bit of shrooms like a little bit a little bit of poppies yeah a uh, he, poppy it, seed bagel yeah oh, yeah i was do i was doing heroin uh, <laughs> yeah no but uh i did like a little bit of shrooms and stuff like that so it was like fun the lights what's were, a little bit i uh, just i literally have like so little i probably did like little i'd say less than like an inch stems probably about like six of those like really nothing it's not that big no, no. It's a lot of mushrooms. No, like this. And like that thin. It, it's like I'm basically eating a handful of twigs. It wasn't much. I've done way more. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I was like, we were walking in and like I had been to this place before and I had like buttoned up and I had my pig ears. I didn't want to wear them because it was just like fucking way too much on my head. I had them around my fucking, uh, I had them around my uh, belt loop. And I walk in, and just this table of some random person, and it's like this whole table of like uh, gay dudes and their friends. So he just points it at me, and I'm like, "Oh shit, maybe they recognize me from doing stand up. That'd be a pretty cool flex in front of Haley's friends." And he was just like, "Oh my god, Jeffrey Dahmer," and I'm like, "What?" He's like, "You're yeah. dressed as Jeffrey Dahmer," and I just <laughs> lifted up my shirt and showed the ears. I'm like, "I'm a pig," and he's like, "What?" And I'm like. No, I just I just look like this. I'm <laughs> uh, I'm dressed like a pig, and he's like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. And I'm just like, "Yeah." So that's just like mad insulting. Yeah, gay and, niggas have like toddler like directness. They'll just come and be like, "You look like you could oh, murder people." Oh, dude, no. It was the thing is what I didn't understand with it is like how fucking insensitive would that be if like if anyone I'm I've watched the D- Dahmer doc like uh, halfway through it like the series on Netflix. And like the dude goes to gay Did you get bars. To the end where they found out he was innocent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where the glove didn't fit. <laughs> um, no, but uh, it was like I've seen the documentary. It's like the dude used to go to gay bars, drug gay guys, take him back to his place, and kill him. I'm like, how fucking insensitive would that be if I went to a gay bar dressed as like the guy who killed the gay guys and was just like, "What's up?" Yeah, it'd be funny if you were gay. Yeah, it would be. Wait, but I'm that's not. actually fucking hilarious. No, but, like, the thing is, it was just, like, it was just, I was, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Don't shake your head, asshole. That's fucking good. People, people oh, would not appreciate, said, dude, people wouldn't appreciate You should have winged the fucking pork chop uh, ears across the room. I and mean, like, that's exactly, that's exactly what I should have done. I mean, like, I was just, like, that, I'm, like, how fucking dumb are you, dude? I'm, like, no, I'm not fucking dumber. Like what? The, I'm like, why the fuck would I roll up to a gay bar just being like, yeah, I'm the guy who notoriably, notably killed a bunch of gay dudes. I didn't think ate. about it like that. Do you think that's what he was thinking? I don't know what the fuck. I he think was he just thinking. thought it was cool, he, but I think he all he thought was I look like Jeffrey Dahmer, and it took over his entire body. I think he just wanted to chow la la your asshole, and he just wanted to see what was going on. Maybe you take him home. Maybe he was a serial killer. And he was projecting onto you. Yeah, yeah. No, but it was like the, the it was just the whole like I just don't like it. Just kind of solidified that like I don't like going to clubs and shit like that. Like I'm more of like like at a club, like comedy clubs and stuff like. I that. I don't know if I would. Um, and this is this is this is gonna sound. Did we just had a conversation about not doing this? But this is not that, and I want to apologize beforehand. I wouldn't associate that club where you just went. With a comedy club, yeah, it's not with an uh, with a, a place with with other clubs, like not old, comedy, like old, like old town Scottsdale. No, clubs. not even that. Like I just wouldn't, I wouldn't accommodate. I just like that's its own thing. I, I don't think you've that's been, there. I, I don't think you've been there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna speak for like because I've been to like other like nightclubs and stuff like that. For the most part, it's like dancing and shit like that. It's the same shit there, but it's just a different clientele, obviously. But like I was well, a uh, different vibe. Yeah, like it, every room in stand up has a different, you know, the, the yeah, yeah, different clientele. Yeah, that's what I'm different saying. Different from the, different the, clientele. The, you know, Phoenix Gentleman Motorcycle Club. They all got different vibes. Yeah, yeah, too. that's what I'm saying. It, 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 it ain't the fucking Moose Lodge. Like it's Who fucking. The fuck is the Moose Lodge? It's where like old fucking oh. sad dudes go. Dude, wouldn't it be cool to be in one of those? Uh, yeah, if you just love being depressed. That's not depressed, bro. Imagine if we did this. With no cameras, but we all met up twice a week and hit cigars and whiskey. And just had like... Tell me where the problem's at. 
You um, tell me we're 65, 401k and pensions, or not pensions, 401k and and you know some money in the in the market in the stocks. Doing all right. Everyone has commas in their budget, six figs. Twice a week, we get out of the house. Go get fucking drunk at the lodge. That's not at all how and you just described it initially. I said doing, like, hanging out at a moose lodge. You're like, let me paint a different picture. We're all <laughs> successful and we're retired. Doesn't that sound fun? I'm like, yeah, obviously. We're all going to get to a point. Not even that. Yeah. Just one, uh, let's say one day out of the house, you don't see any value in, like, all the bros go to one spot. We hang out. It because it's that uh, the thing is it's not like, like we would have our own version of a moose lodge. A moose lodge in its like nature is like kind of just like sixty five year old dudes like playing pool, complaining about their wives, like constantly saying, "Oh, I wish I could cheat on her." If only I am like, "Oh man, I'm I'm fucking." She's so lucky knowing that no one in the right mind would ever fuck them. Do you know like, what our current that's moose lodge is? It's what? Woodshed. That's what our Moose Lodge is at this point in yeah, our life. Yeah, exactly. You have your Moose Lodge. It's Woodshed. No, it's literally the final stop. We meet up twice a week for six hours and just bullshit and get intoxicated and then do it, like rinse and repeat, do it all over. You're the only it. one getting intoxicated. Yeah. Well, it used drink. to be different. It used to be on Saturdays. At least Andrew would drink a few. Yeah. Not that, even a Pacifico. A today, bunch. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not even a Pacifico. I know. Brody, you're not drinking at all? You're not gonna acknowledge what I said into probably a microphone. <laughs> into a this, microphone, you this, fucking this, psycho. This, you want it? <laughs> you, you fucking want it, psycho. You want it. Holy shit! You're so loud. <laughs> No, so, you know, Brody hasn't said shit the whole episode. His mic was just juiced from the Brody, beginning. Brody hasn't been. Brody hasn't been. He, yeah, Brody hasn't been here for a minute, so he just like looked at us, just like no. Brody, how's your Oscar Slaughter's doing? Your knees just look like your knees just look like there's a Voldemort face trying to come through. <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh Jesus, <Ooh>. man! <laughs> it's just ripping. It's just bad CGI of like a skull trying to come through. It your does. Look, Brody it, got baby face knees. Dude. If you've ever seen the poster for that movie Smiley with Shane Dawson, it literally looks like your knee. I'm not from my perspective. It looks exactly so like. So I said it. Voldemort, big cinematic global character, and you said something about I'm a getting, Dawson, I'm some getting, deep cut. I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting ex what are you looking up American Horror Story this guy's obviously running his own bit right now are you running <laughs> your own bit he's running his own bit he's doing his own bit he's doing his damn own it I can't find the picture oh, keep going failed. god oh, damn Jesus this Christ sucks. fuck man look at you swinging a miss swinging a miss no but it, one th another thing that happened while we were still while we were out and about last night at the same place I realized that like I was dancing with Haley, and I don't know if it was, like, my issue or, like, if Haley wasn't thinking because we were, like, on a dance floor, and, like, Haley was just, like, goofing around, and she slid her hand into my back pocket, and I grabbed it instantly and turned around, like, super fast. I'm like, someone's trying to fucking pickpocket Why are you always so on edge? He's in a public bar where he's already getting touched way more than he likes to. Yeah. I'm it's like, kind of accepted. Yeah, I feel I'm like I'm already uncomfortable you being this a, close to people. When I feel someone touch my body, I'm gonna grab them, and be like, "Don't fucking touch me!" Like you I'm already. It was, you're way more aggressive than me. Why are you so aggressive? I I just I dude, it was more I. I it's like that's kind of like yeah, I feel like where I was sitting there and I was kind of getting bummed at the end of the night. And I'm like, shit, am I like autistic? I'm like, yeah. I'm like I really about? I'm like I really can't handle people touching me. Like if people are like walking past me and like scraped into me i'm like yeah I'm like i don't i'm like yeah i don't fuck with it what do you how many fights have you been in in your life i've been in zero fights now how many threats have you lobbed at a person not many at all so these are all just internal battles in your head that you have with yourself you've never I, I, actually I, like i'm a zero to 60 I'm, I'm in, a, internally you've never like shown somebody outwardly I've never like, I've never had the I've never had the confrontation in which I go I can go 60 I mean like we have an internal affairs subject where I wanted to go 60 you wanted to like go that. 120 dog I okay that's not now right that's internal affairs I know it was subscribe okay. to internal affairs right. uh, no but it was uh, I just I felt like it was just me feeling like a curmudgeon just because, like, I know I see people, like, having fun and shit at bars. I'm like, who are older than me. But I'm just like, it's just so not my thing. Like, even when I drank, it wasn't my thing. Like, going out and, like, clubbing and, like, hanging out with people. I'm like, I'd rather just it's hang like out It's like a, brewer house. a brewery is fun. 
Or like a dive bar where you have your own booth. Uh, no matter what, I would rather be at my house. Well, now that, especially really? now that you're not yeah. drinking, ex- like bars that make sense, you're not getting the fullest out of them. Like the point of them is even the cool ones that have like distilleries and big beer things and they might have shuffleboard and, and, and beer pong and all that shit. It's, if you're not drinking, then it is like, yeah, I would just rather be at home. I've never been sober out somewhere past 10 o'clock I know, that's and been like, like I want to be here that's, still. That's like, that's what I was telling Haley because she's like, are you having fun? I'm like, eh, and she's like, well, I want you to have fun. I'm like, well, it's like, I'm having fun with your friends. I'm just like not having fun here. And she's like, why? And I'm like, well, nothing equates to me here. I'm not gay and I don't drink. So it's like gay and bar, those things kind of and you like, like don't want to ruin it for her but you're just like, yeah ah. i'm like i don't want to ruin it for her and her friends like her friend brett is having the best time and i'm watching them have the best time and it's hysterical and i'm cracking jokes with them but like meanwhile it's like i'm going through it i'm just like hey people are touching me i hate this it's all cramped and shit like that i'm like music is loud like fucking it's a bunch of people going sideways and diagonal and up and oh, down yeah, yeah. and Every left and right i don't know what the fuck's yeah, going people on. are screaming someone just yelled why like it's <laughs> a fucking tristan you sound like you're about to go look at the stars Oh yeah, no. It, I wish I had a place to go look at the stars, dude. If I if I just realized I was sitting there and I'm just like, I was like, oh man, if I could just have my headphones in, just smoking a joint somewhere, I would be like so fine with that. And I thought back to high so school with those Andrew. kids. I, you Andrewed. You Andrewed a gay club. No, I didn't. I wish I was wishing they so met, hard I could Andrew. They, I was I was begging for my lucky stars I could Andrew, but the I was terrace stuck. was just taken because then technically it's not on public property. No, it's all it's all fucking. It, it's a huge gay bar. It's like big. So like they had like it, it's it, pretty fat. It was. Thick. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it they're was, really making it work. Yeah, yeah, no, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were Tim gunning it all the way. <laughs> They were make it work. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, fucking. My mom used to watch Project Runway all the goddamn time. I used to watch Project Runway all the fucking time. Why? Is that the one with that chocolate lady who's pretty good? And why? Because you're aspiring to make clothes that fit you. <laughs> I was skinny back then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Project NC. You're just like, wow, you look so good in this 42 LT. <laughs> <laughs> There's some way you made this entire this shipping container bag look so good for these four people. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good Tim Gunn? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know the cast of Project One Way. I just thought you were doing a gay guy. No, no it's way. a very specific man. Uh, all right, Andrew wants to get to the next topic. Do no, I'm just saying. No, no, no. I'm just saying to keep it like uh, that's a good direction to go. No, to I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to. The, I'm giving you credit for being a good producer. Hey, let me just. I didn't. Uh, you said the way uh, we've talked about. Never this mind. So many times. The sound guy's talking into the mic a lot. Let me get to this next <laughs> topic. That we you have. sound so condescending when you say things. Sometimes, like, uh, Andrew wants to move on. I didn't, Dude, you know what? I'm actually. This is all jokes. Aside. Daniel all goes back to this thing we say every single time. Someone's got a tone issue. Hold on. Buddy. This is all. This is all going back to something I've been trying to. Correct, actually, my per- I'm trying to sound less condescending. Believe it or not, I do. I'm not trying to come off as this elitist dickhead. I just, I want you to do. Uh, have I do. You, there's I do. actually an exercise that you could do that I. Learned. I don't mind it, but I'm trying to not come off. Yeah, yeah, no, but there's an ex- the exercise that you could do that I actually uh, learned about. It's called thinking before you speak. Um, <laughs> you just really. I just, do think a lot yeah, though, no, before just, I speak. Uh, just, I do so much how about this? in how about depth this? thinking. How about this? More do you know the amount of internal thoughts that go on? I don't know. There's been a couple episodes that were public that we've had to turn private because you've done some pretty good <laughs> mulling That's over. For comedic <laughs> effect. Yeah, yeah, it's for comedic. Fox effect. News is higher. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Just... No, but I, I definitely think that uh, you have room to grow. Um, when I'm. Uh, Thank you, Sensei. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> but what I was, uh, what I, we're perfectly transitioning into. Uh, speaking of Moose Lodge and us being in our 65s, rewind a couple years. What do you think your midlife crisis would be? Well, let's frame it in if we were going through it now, because if we, if there's, if we're putting in the future tense, like the life expect- expectancy could like change drastically. So our midlife crisis could be like. In our 70s. I'm having my midlife who's, crisis who's right now. Whose life expectancy is... Well, you are going to die soon, so... You uh, yeah. have the lowest life Hit expectancy Hit a gym, but then other than that, who that who's... What are you planning on piecing out? I mean, like, I'm saying, I just... As, as shit progresses, I mean, like, it's already the life expectancy has gone up significantly. I don't doubt, like... Say if something happened in, like, medicine and shit, and, like, we, like, cured, like, a couple diseases, it would, like... 
or just like found like better treatment for them or something like that. Like say if Parkinson's research like kicked up and they actually found like some pretty significant treatment or like dementia research because those pe- that takes people out like so fucking much mm-hmm. or like just a general heart disease type shit. A general heart disease type beat. Um, but I think if, like, you got through that, you do definitely raise it up to, like, maybe, like... 95. I, yeah, 95 or something like that. And, like, that's... It's but, pretty crazy to think that you're going to be 95-year-old and that's, like, the average life expectancy that you're making it entire... Oh, this like, is cool. Unless it's, like, a video decade. game. Unless they have, like, virtual VR at that point that you can, like, basically be a Spartan in until your physical body gives out. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like at some point, there's. I feel like retirement homes are just going to become matrix if, mo- if, like, if, like modules. That so like, let's assume that there's a future that in in thirty years, by the time that we're all in our fifties, there's a it's it's standard play that everyone has a nine to five job, but then after that, you come home and your nine to five job basically funds the VC that you buy and you put these goggles on, or there's a chip already in your brain that you pay for time for. And then it looks just like HD GTA. You go right into it, and there's casinos. There's no death in it. Like, you die, and you respawn. It's basically Spy Kids, but it looks like GTA. Is that is that something that you would, like, jump into if you saw it coming or be hesitant to be like, I don't I, want I any of I would be that. extremely hesitant. I don't fuck with that shit. Where it's just like, I'd rather go do shit in the real world. Even though it's like, oh, this feels real. It's like, it's still fucking... Is it like a video game or like a way of life? You're thinking of it now. What if... I'm I'm thinking it's like, it sounds like this is a metaverse shit. What if getting into virtual... What if, like, what you see, you plug the shit in, and then what you physically are... Do you know... Have you ever tried on VR? Yeah. Do you know how it changes your perception of kind of what your reality is? Like, you look in and you're like, all right, I'm in like a different... I'm yeah. in like a different thing now. I don't know where the walls around me are. I what mean, if, like, yeah, it gives you like as orient, like it or kind of like gives you the, second to orientate. But like, I don't, I don't get lost in it. I feel like if you I, do that, you're a fucking. Boot. The highest tech one that I saw when I was in college, I went to the college football playoff or not, or the college football hall of fame in Georgia. Yeah. And they have this crazy big VR room where they have every college in the country mapped out, and you can go jump in and put this big helmet on that sits in the full thing, and you kind of forget where you're at. And that was years ago. So in like 30 years, if it becomes as commonplace to get into something like that where it looks that realistic as, you know, picking up a controller and playing Xbox. So then it's not like then it's not like a out there thing. What if it's like there's not that much out there on the outside world? Because it's already starting to be like you can make a shit ton of money in the virtual world. Well, I just like I, I definitely think there's always going to be that jet, like those people who want to just stay unplugged. And stuff like that, and like I'd rather experience Some diesel truck men. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather be uh, not just like completely <laughs> like it, it's weird. There's like when it comes into like that, like can it, basically there's a corporation running your reality. What if comedy becomes? <laughs> what if comedy starts intertwining with that? Because no one thought that's that, gonna be weird as fuck. Like, well, because bitch used to be first of all, dudes back in the day used to do the same act forever because time you didn't have to crank out bits, and now we live in the world where cranking out bits is commonplace. So what if like, and no one thought that was gonna happen. So what if in ten years comedy becomes like your VR presence is just as important as because right now some could argue your Instagram presence is just as important as doing jokes on stage but nothing beats seeing someone in person like if someone like i'm not saying for experience but monetarily some people make more money on ad revenue from youtube videos and i just think i think if it was like if someone was like hey would you want to see um would you want to see if you say let's say if it was uh like bill burr like say it's like would you want to you could pay 50 bucks to see Bill Burr live in person and stuff like that, or you can pay, 50 or you can bucks. pay twenty bucks and I can sell it to the world. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Or you can pay twenty bucks and it's like your front row with VR. But it's like I'd pay fifty bucks because I'd rather be there in person. But and like no, make you're an you're, you're misconstruing. It. Think of what you're seeing right now, what you're perceiving of reality. No this matter what, what it it's is? like I, if you're looking at it as a money maker, then yeah, it's no, no, no. Make but I'm money. saying there's almost no difference. If they can find a way that when we put the shit on your face, it looks so realistic that there's almost no like deferrable difference between the two. Well, I mean, instead of going I mean, to can... see Bill Burr live in the real world for fifty dollars, 
he could make his tickets twenty dollars and sell it in whatever that meta universe is and make a trillion dollars. What I'm saying is, I mean, all technically, is the, they're doing that already. It's, it's not the technology is well, not there. Well, yet. if you have v- if you have VR there. head, if you have VR goggles, you can watch movies on that. And but that's it still looks shitty. I'm saying it's gonna no, get it looks, well, it here, here looks thing, good. Is there a real live audience as well, or is it all? That's what I'm talking about. So you you go in this arena that is every arena is. It's they're all set in theaters that only hold a thousand, so it feels intimate. But you sell like a Bill Burr, or a Tom. You sell forty-five theaters out at once because you're doing it and you're performing live. So you're in this thing also. Where and I'm saying thirty years down the line, whoever these big comics are, maybe us, maybe someone else, they have a big enough. But then how the is tech it, is there? The how is it live? If say if it's like say if you're. I, I understand what you're saying. Say if it's streaming to have like. Have you seen a ho- Michael Jackson? This is it. Have you ever seen a video of that? He was at it. You, no, not uh, that. I was at the the Broadway musical. Oh, okay. The Michael Jackson. This is it. And I've seen clips from years ago. It's nuts to see how realistic it is. So if they can find a way, 10, 15 years from now, to make it to where like the thing is with between music and stand up comedy, that's different. It's like there's with, no reusability. And with stand up comedy, it's like you can have like even in a special, like talking to a crowd or something like that. Or like feeling, uh, it's like it, each one is different, and that's what kind of people. But that's what, that's what I'm talking. That's what about. people like. When you buy a seat, you're there. Like you're if the front row is right there where the camera is, you buy a virtual seat to that. And when you put your headphones on, you see me as if I'm five feet away from you. And the difference between reality and what you see inside of that is a nine out of ten to a ten out of ten. It's not that different. You're not losing. I, I would. I still would do. I. I would you understand. Personally. It'd be a good I, money opportunity. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's a good money opportunity, and people would do it. That's but, what drives the world. If you can make more money doing that, why would anyone put a preference on doing anything live? Why because, would I fly be, all the way to Minnesota? Even if you're Tom, why would I fly to Minnesota to do the Timberwolves Arena when I could do it out of my virtual studio I have in my house, night in and night out, and make more money? I don't think it. Well, that's the thing is, too, that you wouldn't be able to do it night in night They're doing it now already. They do a live. It's starting. It's already happening. Honestly, Daniel, if this is like, if that is a thing that's like sounds appealing to you, honestly, that sounds not fun and mildly disgusting to me. Yeah, and you know what? And Rich Voss probably thought burning your bits on Instagram is disgusting. And he's a. How many tickets is he selling compared to guys that burn bits that, on Instagram? That's not. That's not what I'm saying. It's the same but, but thing. But he still does. But he still. Everyone still does live shows. But you're basically saying that it's like it's taking the sanctity of comedy and just like commercializing it. That's your problem with no, it. No, no. I'm saying it's making it like just a. It, it's basically another version of Netflix. It's like it, it's so it's a live show. No, but it's one it's time every, only. It's pay per view. Same way as you go when you go to a show. It's a one time only thing. I then I guess you could it wouldn't I don't know it would have to be like a comedy special right no it's a it's a the same way that these good dudes instead of flying to Vegas to do a big even if you're doing the MGM flying out to Vegas you do more numbers inside of a studio excuse me where it's if you can come through almost this crystal clear where it looks like and you have these headsets on and you're sitting on the couch with your wife and it's like she's sitting next to you in the theater yeah why would Tom actually fly, or any big comic, why would you actually spend the time, energy, money, fly the team out, fly all this production Because they'd throughout? probably make those tickets more expensive and make even more money. To what degree, though? Not if, not if there's dudes doing that. Because even though you're, uh, you disagree with that, there's people that are just going to do what I'm saying because I would do what I'm saying, and I'm not the only one that thinks like that. I know you can do that all you want. You the can... money, but yeah, but the the fortune follows the money. The fortune followed Dane Cook when he put his shit on MySpace. Yeah, the I fortune under- followed <laughs> under- Andrew Schultz when he put his shit on YouTube. I understand. I don't know why you're arguing with me over a thing that is not conceivably well, you're possible. You, what do you mean? It's not. It's not possible yet. They're you're already, like you're yelling. I'm not saying it. I'm sa- my whole thing in the premise was 20 years from now, 30 years from now. And that's I said. I was saying midlife crisis now. That's what I was talking about. And then I was saying like in 20 years it may be something different. And then it took us down this rabbit hole. Oh well, yeah, that'll be then. What are you doing now? God damn, you, you are insane, now? dude. <laughs> Fucking, you just like that entire thing where you're just like, I think virtual reality comedy would be. Uh, I think def- that actually, yeah, halfway, I, I talked myself into that halfway through. Like, that's a pretty solid idea. I know, but I'm just like, 
that takes all the character out of doing stand-up comedy and just makes it kind of just like a product that you can buy. But which also that's all live performance. Everyone is different. Every show is different and stuff like that. So I feel like people will always do that because I mean, hell, you can still there are people who like there's tickets for like those bar- benefit shows and shit like that that people like. Uh, still get that like also the stadium's packed out so why the fuck are they there when they could just pay 20 bucks and stay at home because they want to be there it's interesting it's going to take and honestly it could happen now not even the VR thing it it all it's going to take is one big guy to start like proving it proving it works proving it works all it's going to take is one big guy to be like if I record if I put out a live stream every night that is a one time only live stream nightly and I record myself, and it's gonna start with them recording themselves nightly on their normal tour, and then it's gonna be them being like, "I make so much money off of this live stream." Like, like stri- Aiden Aiden Ross is the perfect example of sitting in your fucking house and doing absolutely nothing can make you a trillion dollars. Why Bo would Burnham. I? Why would I fly? Who's to Aiden a, Ross? One, the biggest streamer in the world, or one of the he biggest. has like every single popping person on his podcast oh, dude and he know. sits in his know. bedroom with a shitty webcam and does millions upon millions of views yeah i mean like bo burnham bo burnham did his last special in his house well that's what i'm saying so you're already seeing the rise of, shit though and but what i'm saying is that he didn't have to go to do a theater well but i'm saying these young kids are already <laughs> i know can, he brought what the, basically the budget to build a theater into his home worth of camera equipment and shit like well, that. you don't think it's gonna like it's gonna cost obviously something he's an old guy though but the young kids like all those already conditioned that that quality doesn't mean really anything. You're conditioned to seeing shitty reels and TikToks that have horrible quality but four million views on them. Yeah, that's true. I, I see a lot of bad shit blow up on Instagram. Or or Kai Sinad and Aiden Ross, dude, they're the biggest of the big and they have trash little webcams and they're it's it's Rogan has four K cameras across the board and these little cocksucks are doing like three fourths of his numbers with just trash quality. So fast forward twenty years, we're gonna get to the point where it's comics doing some virtual shit where they're like, why would I go anywhere when I can do all of this here? Fast forward 20 years, what do you think takes over first? The VR comedy idea or AI comedy? Because AI comedy, they've put out two things and it's it's getting close to sounding like an actual set. Well, that's the thing. It depends on, it depends on what the technology is. If the technology is good, then... Like I've seen some deep fakes and pictures, just still shots at this point, but deep fakes where you're like, wow, that's... That's not a real person. Have you seen the AI comedy thing that Netflix put out on YouTube? No, I'm not, I'm not seen that. Well, I'll, I'll show you after. But it's like, it's AI it's a, all AI generated jokes, and um, I mean, like that's un, uh, that's understandable. No, but like, what I'm saying is, what do you think takes over first if we're talking about a 20 year okay, time? So, I think when, when it comes to stand up, there's the aspect of live performance and I how can you're see, unique. I, I can see one thing that could be an issue. So with, it's like this. So they did a completely AI generated. Do you know how? You, show. Do you know how you know it's losing? Do you know want to? Do you want to know how you know the art of live performance is shifting? How many people do you think? Who's the biggest touring comic in the world right now? Who do you Sigura. think it is? How many people nah. do? You, how many people do you think he entertained in person this year? And he has the biggest tour he's ever had. Millions. In person. In person. Yeah. Absolutely millions. millions. He yeah. does two hundred shows. Even if he's doing arenas of twenty five thousand, what's two hundred times twenty five? What's twenty five times two hundred thousand? Or times two hundred. Sorry. 25,000 times 200. Do that math. 25K times 200. That's assuming he's doing every basketball stadium in fucking Europe and and America. And that's a giant tour. Tell Five me, million. Five million? Okay. Uh-oh. And how many clips do you think he's put out this year that have done five million views? Well, Tom doesn't put out clips. Uh, I'm saying your mom's house. Anything with his face on it. But the monetization from clips isn't as much My- as you get from ticket sales. You don't think he's made more money? He's also probably you getting money made, off merch that is sold there. He's my, getting money that's off my of point. drinks. He's merch got is, door merch deals. Counts as, merch counts as online. He makes way more money in merch online sales than he does on in-person merch sales. That's for true. Sure. For sure. He makes more money in ad revenue than he does. My point is he makes more money online than he does in person. He entertains more people online than he does in person. Online but is all already shit, a but bigger... But all the shit he does online is to meet you in person. It's like For right now, because that's where the mind's at, and he's an old school guy. Once again, I'm a young comic. I'm not the only one who thinks like this. But what's There's the point? There's going to be a point... It's so weird to be like, oh, it's like, oh, he's my favorite comedian. I've never seen him live, and I'm never able to. He's never touring. But I get to go on this app, and I get to see him do his jokes every once in a while, and sometimes they change. Do you know how many... You like underground rap. Do you know how many rappers you probably like that aren't at the point where they tour yet, but you listen to him still 
No, but at the same time, what I'm what I'm saying, I, I haven't really listened to any, honestly, any music lately. Well, not you, not. but there's people that like underground rap of guys that put out songs that, in total, they've probably amassed a million views. But in today's world, that's nothing to get you as far as like a tour schedule set up. I know, but say, if, are you talking about live streaming every tour, like every no, show just, of the tour? Because I'm saying once you get to a six, all professional comics for the most part, I would not all, but you get to a certain level where it's like. You make more money not like from your not being in person talking hahas than you do saying the ha like that's the goal. Like one reel that I put on on Instagram has been seen by more people than I I performed in, in You've never entertained 70,000 people in your life. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That, like, I'm I'm, I'm even, agreeing with you. Even at a little level right now, you have 5,000 people that follow you. Let's say you get even on a even on a thing you get a thousand likes on a fucking thing. That's more people than you've enter entertained in person at one time. Yeah. So it's like that's we already live in a world where the Internet is more important than not more important. But, well, it is more important. But we live in a world where saying that's not OK yet in comedy. We live in a comedy world where. But out of those, you have a problem. It's a, lot, it's a lot easier to like something on Instagram than buy something and dedicate a whole night. And to it's it a with lot easier glasses. to spend money. It's a lot easier to spend 10 bucks online than it is to get up. Brush my teeth, put deodorant on, take a well, shower. I don't know how girl, easy it is. To, show. Well, I don't know how easy it is to spend ten bucks online. Our Patreon has four people, and <laughs> it seems to your to be, point. I give you that. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> it seems that's a pretty easy thing to do. Okay, we, but even to my point, if we had a live show once a week, if we did a like you know bon or the Skanks do live from the stand once a week, yeah, where they used to, if we did that, how many people do you think we'd entertain right now? There might be 20 people to pull up. 50. That was our hopeful number. Some of our videos do 300, 300 views. I know. I know. But like the, the thing is it's a lot more accessible because it's on the internet and anyone can view it. But at, in Phoenix, it's just like those people can kind of like... Well, that's Daniel's point. That's my point. I like, know. That, I, I, that's what it is. The internet's already that. key to but, pretty much... But that being said, that's we'd where make, the money's we at. would make more direct money if we were doing that live Legion of Skanks type thing. Put it this way. Put it this way. Let's say you're anything we've made on the internet. Let's that's say true. you're a crystalline. Let's say you're his exact level of fame, and you could make one million dollars. Not one million. You can make eighty thousand dollars flying to Raleigh, North Carolina, and doing three theater shows, or you can make one hundred thousand dollars going down to the Hollywood virtual special recording studio. And getting on stage in front of you could still bring 30, 40, the thing 50 is, people. It, the thing is, this is a beautiful reality you're painting, but I don't think that's what would happen. Like, I don't... If Sure, if someone says, hey, you can just go into your side room and make, like, $100,000 on, like, VR just talking to, like, 7,000 stadiums at once, then cool. Because I don't think... But, like, I at the same time, I'm still going to go out and do public spots just because I'm like... I feel like, if anything... At least principle wise, for me, I feel like that'd be kind of shoehorning it in. That's and what I'm, I'm like, talking about. You said principle because I don't think we're there mentally yet. But once it starts with the people at the top, it's going to splinter down to the bottom where it's like people are going to start doing. If exactly. there's an it's audience like, for it's it, like podcasts, it's the same thing. Yeah, who people the at thought? podcasts have like, there's people who have million views and there's people like us. And, and some old school comics probably think podcasts are selling out. That's my point. Like, that, to them, they're like, what are you doing? You're just talking. On a microphone, you're just sitting there fucking like you don't see any of the the thing well, it diverges from radio. So I, I understand your point, but at the same time, I don't know if like I understand this is all a cool hypothetical. I, I this is a cool hypothetical, but I still think that people would still go out and do shows. But at the same time, who knows? Because it's not real and we haven't been able like the thing is you were arguing you're trying to argue a point that is impossible to prove. Well, true. no, I'm saying it's real now. I'm saying pr like. It's already proven. The internet is more in person is more important than in person. Well, dude. Okay, so the way I was thinking is Schultz on his la on his special taping like that weekend probably made more money 12, than he did uh, one point two million dollars. The special online, what oh, yeah. he made from that was almost four million dollars. Oh yeah, no, he made more money and stuff like that. Do you but know if anything, that it doesn't. It, he's not just sitting on that and he's like, all right. No, so. but do you know the effort, energy, and time it would take to make that in person? But the thing is, all the things that he like in order to make that four million, he had to do all the shows leading up to that show, sharpening it. No, he had to sure say he, right. he had to say the words and where he had he to said, blow up on the internet. No, but he had to say the words where he said the words at 
is going to become less important. If I, you can say the words... Well, it has to be a stadium a pl- that can fit... I mean, not a stadium, a theater no, that ha- can fit the people. It has to be the words in front of an audience. Well, Kevin Hart did his special in his house. It has to be the words in front of an audience. It's going to turn into... If, if Andrew Schultz did a, hey, I'm doing 20 new minutes... Or I'm doing 20 minutes of material... Every night, I'm live streaming it. It's he five, does. It's he five dollars. He essentially does. He puts it out for free. He does like those fucking flagrant like where rants and stuff like that. That's where we're at now. But I'm that's saying like the a, first that's person's like, gonna make the I change. I wouldn't describe that as stand up comedy. That's more like a late night monologue. Because that's where we're at now. It's gonna take one person being like, "Hey, nightly, I'm gonna charge five bucks. I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna be me and two other comics on. And you have to be big, obviously, to do this. But that's where it's. I feel like you the, don't think if Chappelle did, hey. Nightly, charge five bucks. It's going to be on DaveChappelle.com. Well, I'm going to stand in a, a well-lit room with 4K cameras. I'm going to do 10. Rogan's going to do 10. And a drop-in comic is going to do 10. If he charged $5 for that, nightly, in a year, do you know what he would amass? And then from that, all that shit would spawn down immediately. The thing the is... The amount of comics that would fly across the country to do gigs because of the money. Even if you made $10,000 less, dollars, would there Would there be a live audience? Do you know how many people tune in to my point? I'm saying, would there be a live audience to where you can hear the laughter? Yeah, laughter and do you know how room, expensive those tickets would laughter be? Laughter in the room would be is so important. That's what I'm saying. You can't just do it to a dead room. You need to you, hear yes, laughter. You, you need the energy. Follow the kids. Follow the kids. The streamers have thou- tens of thousands. But then, of but so you're just looking at anymore. lulls in the it chat? Is you're looking at lulls in the chat? That's not stand-up, Daniel. Because I feel, yeah. That's not stand-up. That's, it's really sad that you think that's stand-up. It could be comedy, but I think that's stand-up that's, com- that's a version of comedy. That's a version of entertainment. That's not stand-up comedy, buddy. That's not. You're not getting the live feedback from the audience. You're just chilling it out to people, and you're just seeing ha-ha-ha, ha, ha, no, coins no, have, going off and stuff like that. We don't that. have the technology yet. It's... Well, it's uh, but it's, that's what you're describing right now. Well, it's not I, classic archaic stand up, sure. But it's it, it it's not but it's not stand up at all. It's streaming. It would be it would be like you would have to you'd be streaming a live stand up show. No matter what, it wouldn't be this own Twitch event because it wouldn't be stand up. You need an audience there. And no matter what and then it's a show. Is well, the point of is, is the point up to is the point of stand up to entertain or to hear people laugh at your jokes? That's it's synonymous. To jokes live. Those are synonymous. Entertaining and making people how you, could how you could can you perform go- for sure stand up without hearing people laugh at your jokes? And be I like, do it every day. And just be <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, but like if people, if you say the words, if you execute setup punchlines, say it and look, and there's ten thousand people watching you. If you can't if they're all hear them there, laugh, is Mitch that not Hedberg stand-up? laugh track to special? That, no, to my, all right, don't, don't interrupt this. I just want to hear this from a mathematical situation. If you say into a webcam and there's ten thousand people watching, if you say setup punchline, stare into the camera, but you can't hear the laughter, but there's ten thousand people laughing in real time on the other side of the camera. Is that not stand-up? No, you're no. doing comedy, but you're not you're, doing stand-up. You're, you're basically performing to a kid. You're, you're auditioning. Doing, you're, you're auditioning. Not, you're not doing in That's an audition. Stand-up. That's an audition. That's what an audition is. You're reading lines, and then you're waiting. You're doing read lines. Break. But, read lines. You're doing an audition for stand-up comedy. You're basically auditioning for people to come see you live, y- which is sad you ever like bomb a set and there's no laughter and how awkward it is to tell your jokes when you're eating dick like and also is, you're like it's and, not the same yeah laughter and entertainment are synonymous how many people have been in, entirely enthralled what entertained beyond him? words but not laughing what at a comedy show him? what if well, you had a rotating 200 person zoom screen uh, well, like what is your line well, of what's, like? What's, what if we're you guys are what if we're pure no no what if what if what if we're sixty five and what if we're at a moose lodge we're retired and we all have money well, in the bank? Well, you're no, adding all like, these stipulations. No, I'm just asking what is your because apparently you're the aficionado. What is your line? I'm of, not the aficionado. I'm what just, is your line of like when it's stand up no, versus when it's I'll not? Say, if there's an if audience, you can see people and they can see you. Does that count? No. If there's an if there was a live audience and so you're be, streaming so that, it in VR, so it's stand up. Because there's po- still an audience. So you have to be able to poke a guy in the nose. If you can poke yes. a guy in the nose, it's stand up. I, I, yeah. Point out a yes. guy. You can point out a That's guy. That's my Even point. If, if I'm a, looking at a guy on a webcam and I'm like, dude, a, Brian M., you piece of shit, you funny motherfucker. If I interact with him and Brian M. knows I'm talking to him, the whole audience knows I'm talking to Brian M. Can and they, they can all see, look? Can they and all they look? They can at, actually see who it is better than being in a three thousand person seater where if I talk to the front row, 
The guy in the balcony doesn't know the fuck I'm talking about. Actually, on a stream, that nigga would know who I'm talking about. So but where's the, the line thing is, the thing where is, it's not standing? The thing is, it's different with the live energy in the room. How many True. times have you sat you and watched? No, them. let me let me say let me say this. How many times have you sat and watched a comedy special where someone's killing and you're not laughing at the same killing that's level? That's a different that, thing. What if my whole no, wall it's, right here? No, it's not. What it's the live a, energy of the room. Th that's what I'm talking about. It's you. So all you want is live energy. That's your stipulation. What if my wall right here? while we're recording this had 10,000 people and we got a rotating wall of 300 people and it was live and they could see it and I could see them and they had chat names like Brian M and Skull Smasher this and that and we could do crowd work off of them and when I see it I could see them and we have a producer on the side that when I'm talking to them brings their camera up for all of the fucking chat to see their you're laughing but this is no no that's a I'm, zoom show that's a zoom, a zoom show and they suck. suck yeah they that, suck dick one thing i will say though is how that, could you not but but that's a that's the shitty done, zoom you show do? you did but if you tried to do stand up on a stream that had a hundred thousand people watching it at one time that, what what's the difference not what's the difference is obviously you could boop a guy in the nose but if i can talk to them they can talk to me. Everyone who I can see, everyone can see who I'm talking to, and you get real time reaction on your well, jokes. If everyone could talk on the internet, well, they'd all be saying the n word. No, uh, that takes because, away the heck. That takes away the heck. Because there's when no you're not chat, and there's no and there's well, no that, anything. Then like what's that. the fun in that? Because it's also like the live aspect is like shit can go wrong. There's that X factor, and that also is what makes it stand up. Yeah. It's that it's a live performance in front of real people, and you're it can go wrong. Yeah, you know? anything can happen. It's like you going up there. It takes. And why the, would you? It put, takes. It takes the gutsiness out of it. And people, why would you put jokes out online? Then you can't tour. Then you no. have to write more material. Then you. I'm just that saying. I'm using make sense, that. Daniel. I'm using when you're a comic in the '70s. It did. If that's what you grew I up didn't, with. I didn't. I put out material in the internet that I no, don't but burn. I'm, I don't I'm burn making, the material I put I'm out. I'm making a point of saying like it was a way of thinking at one point to be like you hoard your material, you never put it out, you just work with the same hour. And then somebody put out a special. And then somebody put out a special a year later. And they're like, whoa, what are you doing putting out a special every year? And they're like, oh, yeah, this is like the new way. I'm just saying it's not well, out of see, a realm of possibility. It's not, out, it's not out of a realm of possibility. But at the same time, you're adding so many specific stipulations to make yourself okay, correct Okay, I'll reduce in this. it completely back. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that an e-presence in comedy becomes a giant. It already is, I feel like. Right. That's why. I don't, that's what I'm saying. But, 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 it's not but crazy. My point I'm is saying a huge our, like. I think our problem with it is that you're making it not stand up anymore. Whereas if it was still live well, and you could and you could pay like you said like VR watching up front. Answer it, me this. That's how a long way to make money. People, how long have the top ten percent of comics been making more money in uh, in the internet than they have in person? How long has that happened? For? I don't know. If Maybe that's like last twelve years. years. That's. You you deny that it happens, which is false. I love you, buddy. But the I, big I'm guys are making more I'm, money I'm saying career wise. Rogan in order, made a hundred thousand on Spotify. He's not making or a hundred million on Spotify. Yeah, he's not but making it's all the it's all the that. live shit that he's done previous to that to get him to that point. But now you're there. That, I know the, the, the it big gives guys you that opportunity, but he still does live shows. But the big guys dictate the future. I know, like they, but he still he does he still does live shows. But like it's still podcasts. It's not stand up. It's its other thing. It's it's falls into the realm of entertainment. But even if they like, even when they do live podcasts and stuff like that, it's not stand up. You already see it right now. Wait, wait, wait. Why do we do this? Here's the question. Though. What? Because we want people to come to our stand up shows. We want people to because uh, we like reach a bigger fucking... audience doing this than we do doing stand up. Right, right. No, I I I I've, I can reach a decent amount of people with doing stand up. One how clip I that you put online, if it entertain, even if a reel does bad and a thousand people see it, that's two sold out shows at stand up live. Would but it doesn't equivalent when it comes to like face to face when it comes to like because say if it's a thousand people say if it's half that if it's five hundred people at stand up live I would get followers. more I would get more followers from meeting those people after the show saying hi and them following me on Instagram than if I got tri like double the numbers you have five thousand followers out of the five thousand how many did you meet in person more probably than, probably a decent amount of them more than half. Probably like well, I don't know with Kill Tony and stuff like Thank that you. because that so gave me a So the internet bump. gave you the boost, dickhead. That's I know, my point. I know, but at the same time, I increased it just because. Sure, I've you been... can do fun in person shit as well. But my point is, as much in person stuff, as much work as you said you put in, you've been here the longest. But how one many people? Internet, how many people have bought their followers and have twenty seven thousand followers, and it doesn't it fucking equivalent to shit on the in internet. your own in your own career? The internet. There's has... people who've done that. 
Huh? There's people who've bought all their followers, put out shit, and then it just does nothing. Because you have nothing. to actually do that. You can't just buy 20,000 exactly. followers. Exactly. Wait, what were you going to say? You actually have to do the work? You have to do something on the internet that the internet deems worthy. Just purchasing yeah, followers, the, the internet work. doesn't you have to deem put the, worthy. You have to put the work in. You could do a fucking... You could make a... Vi- you did a video on TikTok that did... I don't know how many videos about a dog that was ugly. That's not putting the work in. That's yeah. a funny video. How many that- people have come to see my stand-up show from that? Well, you, didn't re- you didn't follow up your TikTok with anything. If you just- I did. I've posted a lot of TikTok since then, and including stand-up clips. And I'd say maybe two people have ever come up to me after show ever and said, hey, I saw your t- t- stuff on TikTok. That's, it was really so funny. You think the guys I found are, you on TikTok. So you think Chris D'Elia, who sold out six shows this weekend at I don't think it was Live? from TikTok. I think it's no, from... No, no, no. I'm saying you think it's from in-person relationships or the internet? No, I think it's from him building his career. But do you like, think it's from... From he, doing in-person stuff. You can't take out in-person stuff. I no, feel like he, you're trying to no, do No, the completely in-person stuff is the catalyst. The internet is is the reason it happens. No, it, the the... It's. I, I feel like you're trying to take the in-person stuff out of it completely. Like that's a side note. The internet's it can be. more important. You've opened. Right? You've opened for TikTok guys that aren't funny. Yeah, it the imp- sucks. And they, imp- but they're selling out. But it's not like I said. It does, this brings us back to a previous thing that we've said, uh, talking about it lasting, the longevity of it, and stuff like that. It's not going to last. It's Trevor a flash Wallace in the pan. has lasted for about seven years. I know, but he's good. He's put in work but how prior to get, him blowing but, up. He's actually. But put how in the work. did he get into the ring though? Because he's put no out good content because he's put in no good No matter work. how how many good guys do you know in Phoenix that don't do the internet well that'll never get anywhere because they don't. You can be good if you don't do the internet. No chance for you nowadays. Yeah, Absolutely none. Yeah, you need That's it what, and stuff. I'm saying it's a tool. You need it, but it's not. If you don't have good fucking product to back it up, it ain't going to last. It ain't going to be fucking good. You can good. even have not good product and it keep and it keep popping up. You can have not good product as far as stand-up goes but who we entertain we don't entertain 50 million or 50,000 comics we entertain 50,000 non-comics i don't entertain 50,000 of anybody not yet but the majority of people that watch you are not comedians yeah i know that they're highbrow like not maybe a a wine that is good to the normal man's not good to a fucking a dude uh uh what's the word for someone who works at a, a restaurant who's a wine guy a sommelier a sommelier maybe it's not good to him but to the common man it's fire there's way less sommeliers than there are normal people yeah i don't understand your point my point is that's how tiktok guys stay relevant like you would like to be like oh yeah none of those guys make it but the the tiktok guy who i opened for and stuff like that who who like sold out he 18 plus show sold it to the fucking gills all the chicks who loved his tiktok were there and stuff like that with their moms and shit so like so all that since then i haven't heard a word about him i haven't seen his face i have nothing i have no idea what he's doing i don't know if he's even touring anymore it's like i don't even know if he's gone in higher or lower he hasn't gone higher just because i don't know you know his name no not at all i don't i can't even remember it i wish i could tell you that's a you think i don't remember his name i know i know another uh, but what about the i opened for the saw dude guy what has he done he he that fool's giant. Just because you don't know who he is. No, but Andrew, I'm saying, what is he doing? Andrew knows who you're talking about without even saying his I know, name. I know, I know, I know. Everyone knows of him and stuff like that. It's like saying that, like, my name, like, saying, like, the fucking LeBron James kid. That guy's giant. Andrew, I know, what's his that's name? What I, that's what I'm saying, but at the same what's time, it? it's not, it doesn't Nick last. Nick Coletti. Look up Nick Coletti tour dates. Look up the date Wait, he's at right now, because I would been, actually put my left nut on it. He's doing a comedy club this weekend off of Asa, dude. Oh, yeah, look at this. Nick Coletti, new products. Where are you, you backtracking? That's his whole website. It Dead just, ass? It just, it just <laughs> it's crashed. one Google slide. Yeah, That's it just crashed. Little. No, wait, I've been trying to say this for a while because you were talking about the Zoom show. I want to know if Brody, as an audience member, would be willing to go to one of those. What? Like, from his perspective, because we're talking about it as comics, but, like, he'd be an actual audience member. Like, would you want to go to a Zoom show and watch that? Like, not like what Daniel was saying, like, like... You're just sitting there watching it on your computer and they're just hearing you laugh. That's it. Or you got to type lol. Interesting. <laughs> Tough right. look, buddy. All right. Yeah. Well, that actually, I, I bet you if you, it, he's selling tickets for sure yeah. on the road. Yeah. Yeah. 1000%. That guy's touring for sure. Yeah. He's doing, he's doing shit, but I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Off of a, su- what are you t- yeah, you, yeah, I'm saying it does it. This yeah. guy has every four days. He's doing probably an improv one-off. <laughs> you somewhere. don't know it's an improv. 
Honestly, dude, fucking, it could be some random place in Detroit. Who knows? Tickets at Nicoletti.com, and it's down? Yeah. When did he post this? This was... September, damn, and it's down, down. Yeah. Damn. I may have pulled up a horrible example of a person. You did. You shot yourself <laughs> in the dick. <laughs> Here, here's a, here's example a better of example. Of who? A, a internet guy that's... Oh, King Batch? Thank you. Dude, his live show was... We have Desi Banks at Stand Up Live this weekend. That guy sucks. Dude, I'm so dude, mad that he wait, transitioned to stand up. I wanted to talk about this. So we have Desi Banks this weekend, and at the end of the show, he turned on the lights and he was talking to the audience. And there's one on kid. Turned on the lights. Yeah, like the whole the showroom, right? It was lit up, and this kid ran to the stage. He looked like Playboy Cardi, and he told him that he just dropped a mixtape, and then he freestyled in front of the whole audience. I have a video of it. Um, and it ate a dick. It was awful. He did horrible freestyling and silenced the whole the whole crowd. That Damn. rules. He's, he's like going to be thinking about that for a while, and then Wait. some lady threw up in my Wait. section, and I had to clean it. What? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. He has. He has. I didn't mean to cut you off. King Batch's tour dates are the exact same as Luis's merch. It's hilarious. It's called the Laugh Now, Laugh Later tour. That's the name of uh, oh. Luis's merch. That's, that's unfortunate. Oh, that's, oh. <laughs> that that's a civil lawsuit. Here we come. <laughs> that I don't know who would win in that there, buddy. Uh, I don't think it goes to the good guys. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Have you seen his big spoon? Dude, if he brings dude. that into the quarter law, he, he did. He did a Q and A at the end of his weekend, and every time someone's like, "Do you have the spoon?" and he's like, "No, no, I don't got it. It's hard to Luis, travel with." L- Luis is just like, "Ma, get your job, get your <laughs> job." <laughs> Someone stole our merch idea. <laughs> and now for our defendant, that backflip though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he can. Oh, he used to run up a wall and do Rafi a backflip. Rafi versus yeah. fucking King Box Law yeah, team. That's not bad. All We're right. at the end. Yeah. That was a 40-minute argument. We bitched at each other for that long? Dude, I, I, I stopped taking notes after a while. I love, I love when we get into comedy 20. debate. I also stopped trying to talk for about yeah. 30 minutes. That's fine. I think that's half the appeal of our podcast is the difference between there, me and you and our take on There was thir- yeah. the 30 world. minutes of like, I want to do it live, but the internet. Yeah, it's fun. Sorry. It was, okay. a, it was a circular argument. For it like was a little hour. bit of a circular argument. I'm not going to lie. It was like the same point reworded 10 times. Well, and we figured it out. No, we didn't. No one changed their mind. <laughs> no, no one changed their mind. <laughs> you You're still wrong. And, and, the whole time, and then Brody was like, nah, I wouldn't fucking go to that. Yeah, so he kind of proved my point. Daniel's like, anyway. Like, it's just, Who brought Brody back? <laughs> the streamers yeah. that make huge. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? You come back and take not where, my Where side? was he during the male birth control debate? <laughs> yeah, where was that? Tune yeah. in the last week. Uh, so we're done? Yeah, we're good. Dates. Uh, DBG and Friends. First Wednesday of uh, every month, the December one coming up. Andrew, can you tell me the uh, first Wednesday in December real quick, and then I'll uh, rattle some stuff off. Oh, um, November, the day after Thanksgiving, and the day after that, I'm featuring at Stir Crazy with Brian Ritchie. Uh, come out, hang out. December 7th. December 7th, DBG and Friends. Ooh, it's a couple days before my birthday. If you want to give me a birthday present, come out to DBG and Friends. At the House of Comedy, it'll be good. It'll be a fun time. Are you saying, would you like to give me a birthday present, come to the show to give you a birthday present? Or the t- you coming to the show is a birthday present I mean, if you, you want to double up, you can come to the show I was about and to give say, me a birthday I was about present. to say, I'm like, that is such a dickhead thing. <laughs> hey, be buy like, a full price ticket. Well, you already come to the show, get me a t- fucking present. <laughs> yeah, 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 give yeah, me a yeah. thing at the same time. I will be disappointed if Legos are not placed in my hand. Yeah. No, I just but, uh, realized today is my birthday episode. I said four words today. It's <laughs> December 7th? It's, uh, November 9th is my birthday. Aww. That's the day this comes out. Okay. Happy birthday, buddy. Uh, uh, who gives a shit now? How old are you, 24? Yeah. Oh. You move out yet? <laughs> Maybe by the time... No, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just I'm you move? <laughs> I'm giving you shit. I, I love you. Uh, all internal the dates, affairs. dickhead. Yeah, we're shooting internal affairs after this by the Patreon. Uh, November 30th for me, I'm going to be last show in Phoenix, House of Comedy. Please come out. Uh, when does this come out? November 9th. Okay, so uh, the Stir Crazy competition happened. Hope yeah. I advance. Uh, oh, November 17th, I'm going to be at the Purple Turtle. Jesse Evers booked me, that troll doll of a man. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I love you, Jesse. Uh, anyways, <laughs> no, I... That it's that's great. <laughs> He's a great guy. Uh, Thank you, Jesse, for booking me. The Purple Turtle, I'll be there. And then uh, November twenty third, I will be doing a show for a turkey uh, at Stand Up Live. I might be working as well. Maybe I'll be your server. Uh, you can't have any free shit. That's all. Uh, I have a show tomorrow, November tenth. Uh, the Improv. I'm also competing for a turkey. Uh, we got Coop's Comedy, uh, Coop's uh, Bar and Grill KO Comedy Hour, November sixteenth. Uh, November 23rd, I'm back at the Improv for this week. Sucks tonight. And then, uh, what did we have a we have a show in December? I don't have anything in December. Okay, 
I have a show in December. I don't know when, but we'll get back to that. All right. Well, thank you for watching. I hope I'm sorry we just argued, but Daniel doesn't know things. And that's not my fault. This will be interesting in five years to see how this debate actually fleshed out. I know. You're arguing for a future that isn't even real. Sorry you have no forethought and like to think as far as your next step goes. Uh, I live in the Will Smith I Am Legend future. <laughs> We're just me and my dog. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <and> we'll <see. laughs> I just want to live there, man. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Happy birthday, me.